Hi, uh, this is Aditya Bedekar. I work as a comic book letterer and I am going to talk about three pages from Little Bird number two. This comic was created by Darcy van Polgeest and Ian Bertram and colored by Matt Hollingsworth, lettered by me and designed by Ben Didier, published by Image Comics. There's a hardcover collection coming out on November 20th, which you might want to check out. So at this point, Little Bird is running away from these drone creatures that have been sent after her and another renegade. And this is the bit where she actually uh, gets caught by them. I wanted to discuss the scene because it is quite unusual. If you look at it on the page, you'll realize that it's actually like mostly sound effects in blank panels. So uh, the first panel here is sort of... Uh, fairly standard like I'm doing a sound effect uh, I've done these sound effects quite a bit throughout this book which is essentially white colored with black strokes uh, which kind of punch through the panel rather than kind of building on top of the panel uh, which is why the sound effect is also masked behind uh, the machine's tentacle so I really enjoyed doing these throughout the book because I think Ian's artwork and Matt's colors lend themselves to this kind of uh, work where the simplicity of the sound effect actually stands apart from the textured artwork. Um, I'm using Blambot's font Tunacious for a lot of these, these, but I'm also manipulating those afterwards. Uh, the oof in this panel is basically hand lettered, like the oof itself was drawn and then scanned in and kind of put uh, onto the page in Illustrator. The style of the tentacles is, I wanted to kind of uh, do this inhuman machine style but also kind of keep the uh, rough textured look that I've maintained th throughout, like uh, something um, that looks hand-drawn, uh, which actually these are, I think. I think I think I drew those boxes and the tails by hand. Um, and I've kind of given them a color that uh, speaks about danger and, you know, uh, kind of the intrusive effect they have on the scene. On the third panel, you can see uh, that Little Bird's sight is actually dimming. And she's kind of receding into blackness. So to kind of match that, I rendered the machine's sound as if it was from her point of view. So it's also kind of receding and darkening as she falls into darkness, essentially. And now we come to the fun part, because um, these pages were sent to me by Ian uh, with the panels actually drawn out, but no text on them. And Darcy essentially told me to kind of go wild, which is exactly what I did. So the first one that the sound is essentially I wanted to kind of make it feel as if in the darkness she's hearing it. So it emerges out of darkness and then kind of almost recedes back into darkness. I wanted to fill up the panels with the sounds because these are essentially dull but thick sounds that she's hearing in her, um, let's say, stupor or unconscious uh, condition. And these are interspersed by her narrative captions. These are also kind of emerging out of the blackness. I don't know if you can notice this, but there's a very light yellow color to them rather than them just being white. So I kind of inverted the color scheme for the captions and placed them here. And I tried to place them in a way that sort of accentuated the story as well. They're not just like slap bang in the middle of the panel, uh, but they're sort of off to the edges. So, you know, the, her consciousness is sort of coming and going. And I wanted to kind of imply that. Towards the end, there's a sound that kind of goes across panels. And I kind of wanted to do that because again, like there's this um, strange sort of coming in and out of consciousness that I wanted to in, uh, imply. So uh, I think most of these sounds we kind of nailed in the first couple of drafts of this of these pages. But the colors we kind of kept going back and forth on because um, originally they were much too bright. And then we... Uh, made them duller and duller and duller and at some point of time we had to kind of bump up bump them up a bit so page number 29 uh, there's it's more of the same but this time she's kind of coming back into consciousness so uh, that her text is increasing and the sound effects are actually decreasing it was quite interesting working through the rhythm of these panels because they're um, essentially each panel is a unit of either time or space so the last bit of this first section on page number 29, I wanted to leave it alone because this is where um, the kind of panels kind of, you know, re-merge and lead to like her actually coming back to wakefulness.
this is a trick that I'm quite happy with where um, the hope to the hope exists transition. So the hope is essentially still in her unconscious state when by the time she reaches hope exists, this is her coming back to uh, wakefulness and this is a much more conscious narrative caption from her. And then finally you turn the page again and I wanted the lettering on this to be quiet because this is essentially she's been rescued um, and like the machines have been defeated. There's a sort of quiet magnificence to this image, which I didn't really want to disturb. Unlike most of this book where I've tried to um, use sound in a much more variable manner, like I've kind of accentuated words and all of those things here, I just wanted to let the words sit and for the reader to kind of take in the majesty of this image.